this is Will's Front, brought to you by theunshackled.net. Kathy, nice to see you again. Hey, Tim. How are you? Now, I'm good, thanks. It's been a busy uh, week. Uh, it's, it took a lot out of me, the, the weekend, not just the, the march it, itself, but getting everything edited for, for Sunday night, and then I've been slowly uploading everything to the Unshackled uh, main channel, including our chat as well. Yeah, that does sound like you've been busy. You did a great job with that video, by the way. Thank you for that. Oh, thanks. Yes, it, it, I'm still going to do a, a proper highlights from the actual march itself, but that requires cutting down about 40 minutes to about five to 10 minutes. So I've still got that on my plate. Oh, good. Well, that'll be great. That'll be easy to share around. Now, there was plenty of alternative media present at the march on Saturday, not just uh, myself, there was uh, Dia Beltran, there was uh, Maddie's Modern Life, there was Avi Yemeni, uh, I'm probably forgetting, you were with Life Choice, uh, they were doing their, their own media coverage there. I, I spoke with, uh, I've seen his face before, the, he's sort of got blonde hair with, with glasses, do you know his name? Ari, behind the camera. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I had a good chat with him on the way back to the train station. We see each other face-to-face uh, -face all the time, but we never chatted. Oh, great. Oh, that's a, that's a good day to get to know each other. Now, on the day, the only mainstream media I saw was uh, Channel 9 News, and they put a was less than two minute clip to, to air on the the 6 p.m news and of course it just focused on the the clash uh, between uh, pro-life and pro-choice uh, activists because that's what the the mainstream media is inter interested in conflict and they want to see that there's division out there and they spoke to a few uh bystanders uh, were well, one in in our march and then one at the counter protest and then a bit of pushing and shoving at the counter protest and a bit of bernie's uh, speech at all but it doesn't surprise me that they they cut the whole day down just to those those sort of spicy bits it's pretty disappointing isn't it because it's the one day of the year when we can give our really clear message and they don't bother to cover our really clear message so they're really misrepresenting what the day is about and mischaracterizing us in the process. And we saw it was released on Monday evening and published in Tuesday's uh, Herald Sun by their state political editor, uh, Tom Menna, which uh, the title was uh, Far Right Figures Feature at Liberal MP Bernie Finn's March for the Babies. Now, obviously, Bernie Finn is the, the leader uh, and the chair. And yes, he's a, a liberal MLC, but there's people from all political parties, backgrounds. It's not just Bernie Finn's faction of the Liberal Party march. That's so right. At first, I thought it was really hilarious that we all got lumped in with the far right. But then I realized how irresponsible that is. And it's really um, actually creating fear in people's minds, thinking that we're a bunch of extremists. And you're right about the political parties too, because there are plenty of Labour Party members who are pro-life, aren't there? Yes, but unfortunately they, well, I'm not sure if they're told to keep quiet, but they keep very quiet uh, most of the time, though they still do vote the, the right way when it comes to, to conscience votes. Uh, now, the, the, the byline is uh, far-right extremists have joined Liberal MP Bernie Finner's annual pro-life march to push changes to Victoria's abortion laws. And it mentions here the members of the male-only far-right Proud Boys were seen at the rally with a post on the group's website describing a confrontation after the march with a counter-protester at a, a CBD bar. Now, the Unshackled republished uh, that report and a uh, confrontation is quite misleading to to it implies that it was violent they uh, they saw a member of the yard uh, yelling at racist dogs or as they were called for the the day yelling at religious uh, dogma and they just simply went over to to talk to him and he saw the proud boys and because he is told to be scared of them he was really nervous and then then left there was no physical contact at all Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't know what the backstory was with that. But um, I did a bit of research on the Proud Boys and there's nothing to suggest that there's anything um, violent or dangerous about them. They just sound like they're anti-feminists to me. 
But obviously the media is driving this idea that they're particularly noxious people. And it sounds like they rattled that guy and then they got a story out of it. Um, it sounds like you did actual research. You didn't just go to Wikipedia, which described them as a far-right neo-fascist organization with uh, links to, to white supremacy, which is complete rubbish because yeah. they, uh, they accept members of all different races and sexual orientations as long as you are biologically male and it's a, it's about uh western chauvinism as they call it and their values they're not neo-fascist they're actually libertarian in nature i went to wikipedia first and so i got that side of the story but then i went to the proud boys website and you're right there's nothing there that would make me uh suspicious about them at all i can't i don't know any more than that but if they're just standing up for manhood then I'm a big believer in that. They also named uh, Dia Beltran, who it was described she runs a far-right uh, YouTube uh, channel and mentions that uh, she's interviewed Neil Erickson and, and Blair Cottrell, as far as I'm concerned, talking to people. That doesn't make you uh, far-right. And it's fair to say that most of her interviews are focused on Christianity, a uh, very theological, uh, literate uh, Christian. Uh, so, so that's again a another uh, smear. And uh, uh, Bernie Finn uh, said that uh, Miss Beltran had introduced herself on Saturday as a blogger and had asked for an interview uh, with Bernie, which she was happy to to do. Yeah, that's right. Um, I've been interviewed by Dia, so. I'm not a far-right extremist at all. And she's had a lot of, um, a big variety of people that have been on her show. So it's perfectly legitimate that she asks people from all over the spectrum for their ideas about things. Only, um, that's again, another kind of fear that you're afraid to talk to certain people. Um, if we really believe in freedom of speech, then we're gonna be listening to everybody's point of view and just letting them have a say. Yeah, that's exactly right. and. As you said, you've been on DS Channel, but uh, you were mentioned in this article. It's, it says here, other attendees reportedly included far-right activist Avi Yemeni, who I don't know that he has strong views uh, on an abortion. He goes to these uh, rallies in Melbourne just to, to interview people on whether they be on the, the protest side or the counter uh, protest side, which his uh, video is is up on on YouTube now, uh, so so you can see uh, his report uh, for yourself. But I I was surprised to see your name there, given that it does list uh, far right figures. That's <laughs> that, that that that's the title of it there, and uh, you're described as a mother of thirteen children, which is true, who launched a failed challenge to laws that ban protesters harassing patients outside abortion clinics. Have you done any harassing? No, I wasn't actually charged with harassing. I was charged with breaching the exclusion zone law. So that's another bit of a slur there. It was pretty funny to see my name in the same sentence with Avi Yemeni. But um, we had a bit of a joke on Twitter that having 13 children is pretty extreme. Maybe that's what they were talking about. Well, we're in a climate emergency. You're having 13 children, that's putting the future of the planet uh, in jeopardy. So yes, that is very extreme. <laughs> that is the future. If they would just open their eyes and think it through, children are the future. Children are the ones that, that are going to be taking over from us and they might be able to sort things out a bit better than we have. Now, the article quotes the, the Labor Health Minister, Jenny Makatos, who, uh, who called on the Liberal Party con to condemn uh, extremists, and it also uh, quotes uh, Reason Party leader Fiona Patton, who was at the, the counter-protest, uh, questioned Mr Finn's disturbing embrace of the far right and their ideas. Doesn't Fiona Patton know that she was on the same side as Ros Ward, the socialist alternative, and uh, the Victorian socialists who have pretty extreme views about overthrowing capitalism and Australian society? Yeah, I was pretty surprised to read those comments. And it's very unfair to say that Bernie's embraced these ideas. He can't control who comes to his marches. As long as they're well behaved, he's not going to be having people turned away. So, yeah, I, look, I think I would characterize a lot of Fiona Patton's ideas as extreme, morally extreme. They're not, 
ideas that I'd agree with at all, let alone the socialist side of it, which does tend towards violence. And I did like how Bernie Finn, because he was asked for a response, basically battered away uh, these accusations. He said he knew precisely nothing about the, the Proud Boys. That was a sensational day with a crowd of more than 4,000 people. Uh, asked about far-right extremists, I don't know anybody who fits that description to tell you the truth. I'm not aware of any undesirable elements turning up at all, apart from Fiona Patton. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was classic. And that's the way you've got to handle it. Oh, because it was a successful day. Uh, the the estimation I got on the the night was around three thousand five hundred. But I'm I'm not sure where you were in the march itself. But I remember every time a turner corner was turned, I could see this huge sea of people parading uh, up with us. Yeah, I could see, I thought it was about a block and a half of people, about 10 abreast. So I was guessing at least 3,000. So it sounds like I was on the mark anyway. Great if it was more than that. And of course, uh, at the same time we were holding the, the March for the Babies in Melbourne, there was the, the March for Life in Brisbane, uh, which is organised by Cherish Life up there. They're fighting the, the same extreme abortion laws that we have down here in Victoria. And I Google searched for news articles about it because well, Google only reports mainstream media now. So if you want to find out what the mainstream media says, uh, then you, you Google it. That's the only time you should use Google. But there was absolutely no mention at all. There wasn't any counter protest as far as I'm aware, which I think is why mainstream media didn't bother reporting it. There was no conflict. But uh, th this is the point that I made that it's either fake news or non-news about the pro-life activism on the weekend. Unless they can say something negative, they just... Uh, Don't say anything yeah. at all. Yeah, it's, it's disappointing. I mean, people might not agree with us, but they should know that we're willing to, to stand up. They should know the numbers that were there. They should know it's not a dead issue. And um, they should know that, you know, we don't intend stopping and just packing up and going home just because there's an, a change in the law. Democracy doesn't work that way. We're going to keep turning up. doesn't matter what the media says or doesn't say. We're going to keep going there every year. Well, that's why the mainstream media is slowly dying because, well, as proved again on the weekend, they either slant the news or just omit things from the news. The news has an agenda now, and it's becoming increasingly obvious with, well, not just myself and the unshackled, other alternative news, making sure that the, the truth uh, gets out there, the full facts, the full context of, of what happens. Yeah, um, most people I know don't watch mainstream news, so I don't know who's watching it, Tim, honestly. Um, it may be um, it's handy to just scan the headlines sometimes and find out if there's been a nuclear bomb dropped somewhere or something, but apart from that, um, it's the alternative news sites that give us the, the facts. Well, as I said, uh, not only have did I air my Sunday night uh, report on, on Wilms Front? I've uploaded all the different uh, segments uh, up on the Unshackled main channel. So there's, there's plenty of actual raw uh, footage uh, from the day with, with more to come. So, so people know if they want to know uh, what really uh, took place uh, at the march and what the true message was, uh, uh, they know where to go. There's also D. Beltran's uh, vlog and also Maddie's Modern Life. I mentioned Avi uh, Yemeni's. There's also I saw a good write-up by uh, LifeSite News. So plenty of other sources to go to. Oh, and of course, Bill Muhlenberg's report as well. How could I forget that? Yeah, Bill's was great. Um, Life site was good, and uh, Life Choice will have one coming soon. We've got some editing to do uh, before that's released, but it's great. That's quite a selection. Oh, it's it's great that we live in the the age that we do that we can broadcast our our own message and and bypass the the gatekeepers. And I look forward to to Life Choice's coverage and maybe following uh, some of their their future activism as well. Uh, I think our audience could hear some some children uh, in the background, so I'll let you get back to, to them. But I appreciate you uh, coming on for a bit of a, uh, a post-analysis. Oh, well, it was great to talk to you again, Tim. Thank you for asking me. This is Wilms Front, brought to you by theunshackled.net.